A record-breaking number of people are expected to travel for the 4th of July. AAA projects roughly 71 million people will travel at least 50 miles this week. 60 million of those people are driving, which is well above pre-pandemic numbers. So let's head over to Logan Airport with CBS News a Boston reporter Penny Commit. Ah, oh, Penny, it looks pretty calm right now behind you, but I, I don't want to jinx things. Um, we know that the roads are pretty busy. Uh, how's the airport looking? <laughs> Well, Emery, it's funny. Normally, when I'm reporting from Logan Airport, I can barely stand right here where I'm standing. I'm totally surrounded by people. So today almost feels a little bit surreal, but there's somewhat of an explanation for that. AAA says that this Independence Day travel period actually spans about nine days because so many people traveled last Friday. They were lucky enough to have off the whole week for the 4th of July. So last Friday was actually the busiest day, nearly 3 million people traveling then. And then last Sunday, we had about 2.8 million people. So looks like this year, although there's going to be so many travelers, those days are a little bit more spread out. And that's why we're at Logan Airport right now. And I can actually stand comfortably. <laughs> and so, so the leaving is staggered, but chances are if you, la if you left last week, you probably need to be back at work next week. So what's the expectation in terms of when everyone's coming back? Absolutely. Well, of course, that's always what happens. Same story when it comes to Thanksgiving, too. That Sunday right before we start work is always a nightmare. So, of course, AAA says leave early. I spoke with some passengers out here. They actually said they all booked like the 5, 6 a.m. flights on Sunday just to get out as quickly and easily as possible. The roads on Sunday, though, really where we're going to see the most major headaches, especially the hours, AAA says, between 2 and 7 p.m. So if you're driving this weekend, honestly, if you can, maybe leave Saturday. That's really good advice. Um, so far, it doesn't look like we've had any ma major delays, certainly not at Logan <laughs> Airport. I think there were some hookups maybe at Newark. Uh, they're, they're having issues with the air traffic controllers. Um, but I'm wondering if you've spoken to anyone sort of in the industry or in the airline or even people traveling and whether or not they've kind of factored in the possibility that there may be some unexpected delays. Well, Emory, I think that's a possibility that all of us have to factor in yeah. nowadays, right? I mean, headaches when it comes to airlines have only increased over the last several years. A lot of people I speak to out here tell me that time and time again that they just don't feel like they can rely on the airlines the way they used to, maybe pre-pandemic. Um, this is really Boston-specific, but something that people are really factoring in here is that here in Boston, we're in East Boston at the airport, and then to get to downtown, there's basically one tunnel that connects the two, and that tunnel closes for a month starting on Friday. So what people here in Boston are really factoring in is how am I going to get home when I get back from my fun holiday travel? So this weekend could be really tough for people leaving the airport, at least specifically here in Boston. I know that's pretty specific, but uh, a big big story going on here. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. That sounds like one of those situations where you go on your vacation and you're all calm. And then the second you get back, you're completely stressed out. And everything that happened on the on your vacation is totally Absolutely. wiped out. <laughs> uh, Penny Commit, thank you so much.